who's first to share testimony of today? Eddie, come on up. Yeah, you were here first, six in the morning. Welcome back. It was really amazing this morning. I mm -hmm. uh, got here uh, maybe a few minutes late, and Kim was already here, pouring our heart before the Lord, our God. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Larry, and he brought a, a dinner, and it was just a glorious time. There's something that began to happen as we were praying for one another, just praying over these baskets over here. Mm -hmm. We started praying for the children, all our children. Kim had a list of all the parents and their kids. She started praying over them by name, by name, and then, and we just all got into it with her. And then the Lord reminded me about something that happened years ago when Dodi, uh, uh, Everest, uh, Rosie's mom, I remember her sitting over there. And she grabbed one of her grandkids and started making this declaration about her mate from this very same verse. He said, all you children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of my children. She was just over there saying it over her kids. Yeah. And this is the same verse I want to kind of share with you today. We all have, a lot of us have kids and grandkids and making declarations before the Lord of what God has said, regardless of what we see with our own eyes. Would you mind sharing this with me as a prayer today? All our children, all our children, shall be taught of the Lord, shall be taught of the Lord, and great, and great, shall be the peace of our children, shall be the peace of our children. Isaiah 54, 13. Isaiah 54, 13. Amen. Lord, we agree with your word, O oh Lord. We receive it. We agree with you. We agree with your word over us and our children, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We say, let God be true and every man a liar. Mm. The word of God will be fulfilled in all of us, all our children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Who'd like to come next? I want to share a testimony I got on our chat from uh, Jen uh, Kuski, who's up in Santa Inez, and she's starting a watch on our Wednesday. And she started today and said, we prayed here, Colossians 2. It rocked our beans. We're joining you. That's what we're looking to do for those of you who live too far or work won't, work won't allow you to. Gather two or three people and join a watch, be present, be committed, engage with the word. And then we, once we know when you are meeting, we'll connect via, via text with whoever's leading that watch so that you can, we can flow back and forth. And that way we start multiplying that. And Eddie, that was, come on up, yeah, Peter. That was uh, Rosie's mom. Amen. Of course it was your mom. See, look at that. Her word in a worship watch back then now has become a focus of all our watches to yes. agree with the Lord. Amen. 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 That's good. All right. So praise the Lord. I want to do what you were talking about, Pastor Steve. I think it's fantastic. We're going through scriptures um, uh, and the Old and New Testament. So I want to pull up. I'm going to do it like a sandwich. I'm going to pull up a New Testament mm -hmm. scripture, one, one verse, and an Old Testament verse that works with it, and then one verse of another New Testament scripture, so that the Old Testament is sandwiched in between two New Testament scriptures. So um, I'm excited about that because the meetings we have in the park with our Jesus group and meetings I still do at Teledyne, even though I'm retired from there, we have been going through scriptures, book by book, chapter by chapter. So here's what I want to do. I want you guys to read this with me, okay? Let's pull up Revelation 12, 11 first. Revelation 12, 11. Can we pull it up on the screen? Yeah, it'll take a moment. Once you see it, you'll, it's, it's there. Uh, is it up? No, nope, you'll see it up. You'll see it right there. It okay. just takes a moment to get All there. All right. All right, it says, can you read it with me? Yeah. And, and they, they overcame, overcame him, him by, by the, the blood, blood of the, the lamb, lamb and by, by the, the word of their, their testimony, testimony, and they, they did, did not, not love their lives 
to the, the death. death. Okay, guys, so we overcome by the word of our testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. I think they put blood of the Lamb first, which is good. So if you guys, the blood of the Lamb, the red blood of the Lamb, you know what? Everybody's talking about the red wave that's coming. That's the real ra red wave right there. We're pleading the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. At our two to four shift today, Brian was talking about the goodness of the Lord and all of the things that God has done for us already and how he's already poised to do more. That's our testimony, talking about what God has done in our lives, what he's done for the church, what he's done for this country. Uh, remembering the word of God, the promises of God, as we are talking about here, reading the scriptures, reminding him of his promises and giving him no rest, as the scripture says. Uh, telling him the body of Christ all the things, the healings, the breakthroughs that we've experienced. That's the word of our testimony. And pleading the blood of Jesus Christ over this country. That's the red wave that we're praying over. That's the real breakthrough yeah. that we are praying and seeing happening. It's affecting our culture, guys. You might not see it as fast as you would like, but as we were saying at the meeting, the, the prayer watch today, God is never late on anything yeah he's always right on time but it's right on time with his time not yes. our time amen amen <laughs> all right so let's pull up the uh old testament scripture uh deuteronomy uh chapter 4 verse 30 and 31 deuteronomy 4 30 and 31 all right and if we can read that together uh is it up there? It'll yeah. be there. Yeah. All right. And when, let's read it together. When, when you are in, in distress, distress and, and all these things come upon you in the latter days, days when you, you turn, turn to the Lord your God, God and, and obey, obey the his voice, voice, his voice. Next verse. For the, for the, the Lord, Lord your God, God is a merciful God. God. He, will he will not forsake you nor destroy, destroy you. Nor forget, forget the, the covenant, covenant of, of your, your fathers, fathers which, which he swore to them. them. So God is not going to forget. In our day of distress, in verse 30, he will come to us. Yeah. Because he's not forgetting his promises. He's there to fulfill it because God is not a man that he should lie. Nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? He says, shall he not bring it to pass? Yeah. Every promise, every promise is sure. Now let's look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6. Ooh. Hebrews 11, 6. Mm. It says, For but without faith, faith it, is it is impossible to please him. him. For, For he, he who, who comes, comes to God, God must, must believe, believe that, that he is. is and that, that he, he is, is a, a rewarder, rewarder of, of those, those who diligently, diligently seek him. him. All right, so that ties with all the scriptures we had before this. Without faith, God is saying it's impossible to please him. We know our faith comes from him. We can't manufacture that. Those who come to God must believe that he is, that is, that God exists, <laughs> mm -hmm. and that he is a war rewarder of those who diligently, not casually, but those who diligently, that word diligently means those who conscientiously, consistently, regularly, intentionally, let's say that again, consistently, consistently con consciously, consistently. intentionally seek him. Yes. So that diligence, it's, diligence is, we're asking for it from him, not from us, because our willpower lasts about a week before it gives up. So it has nothing to do with our willpower. So let's all stand and let's, let's receive that together. Yes, let's do it. Diligence. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Faith. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Okay, so Lord, we receive your faith. We receive your faith. <laughs> Faith in the Word of God. Faith in the Word of God. Faith in your promises. Faith in your promises. 
We appropriate your diligence. We appropriate your diligence. We receive your diligence. We receive your diligence. We accept your diligence. We accept your diligence. And we receive it in faith. We receive it in faith. That we are regular seekers of you. Consistent seekers of you. Consistent seekers of you. Intentional seekers of you. Intentional seekers of you. Conscious seekers of you. Conscious seekers. And in unconscious seekers of you. And unconscious seekers of you. With all of our hearts, Lord. With all of our hearts. Lord. We receive new faith. We receive new faith. Increase our faith. Increase our faith. Increase our diligence. That comes by your grace. That comes by your grace. We ask this. Mm, ask this. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Okay, who's next? Go, Becky, please. To go along with that, we do the four to six watch in the soaking room in the prayer center. And when I walked in there, I, you know, I was there by myself for a while. And I started praying and I started asking the Lord, Father, so many of our people, so many of us, are dry or have been in a silent season. And we've been uh, searching for you with our heart, but it's not enough. Lord, we need more. We need your grace to search for you, to desire you. Well, then somebody came in and they sat down, but with them, they carried the presence of God tangible to where you could feel it. And I felt it. And I considered it an answer to prayer. And I said to the Lord, what does this mean and what are you doing? It was that strong. It was so strong, if I hadn't been sitting down, I would have been knocked down. And I, and I told the person, you're carrying the presence of the Lord, because I didn't know what else to say. You know, we, we say dumb things sometimes. And then I just kind of closed my eyes and I started smelling things. I started smelling different fragrances. I smelled frankincense, which is healing uh, and restoration. I started, I smelled pancakes. And I said, what is that? And he says, my sweetness. I mean, there was just a lot of, of different. And then he opened my eyes and I could see him and what he was doing. You guys know the little three-year-old that dances with the kids dance team? little Lila, sometimes she'll twirl because she wants to see her dress go out. You know, she wants to see it twirl around. And he looked like that. He didn't look polished. He didn't look like I'm a dancer. He looked like somebody who was just dancing out mm -hmm. of joy and wanted to see his, his what he was wearing. It was a uh, robe. He wanted to see his robe go out. And his robe started going out further and further and further. And things were flying off the robe. They were, they were just going in every direction. And he's going, almost looking like he was going to fall, but he's laughing in the midst of it. And these things are just flying out. I thought, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. And then the other person said, I'm smelling fragrances. And I said, yeah, I know. It was so tangible. And so I just want to thank every watch every watcher that prayed from 6 a.m. to that time because you ushered in the presence of God into the atmosphere that was so tangible and it made him happy because he was laughing and laughing and laughing and he said, oh, one of the smells was water and he said, my people's dry uh, season is ending today. Mm. And he says, it is ending. And I said, yes, Lord, I claim that for myself too. So. If you've been in a silent or dry or questionable time right now, and somebody prayed that in there, they said, I've been dry, I've been, I've been so dry, and I don't know what to do. And, and, and it, was, it was, all I could say was, you don't have to chase after him. You don't have to try to run after him. And he doesn't have to run after you. You're in him, he's in you. When he dances and twirls, you're dancing and twirling with him, whether we perceive it or don't. And, and today, 
we were twirling with him and mm. laughing with him and our dry season is over and everything every smell i believe is a manifestation of what he's bringing right now and manifesting to the body of christ his sweetness his love for us his acceptance he's not angry at any of us no matter how much we've neglected him you know that last scripture said those who diligently there's most of us a lot of times have not been diligent but he says i'm throwing out diligence to my people my oh, diligence not yes, your yes, diligence yes, it's like yes. what peter said it's not our striving it's his his gift to us so if you've been in that or you want it just go ahead and stand up and God's just going to release whatever he released by the, by the robe that was just twirling around and around and going further and further out. Father, in Jesus' name, we receive that we are in Christ. We are not in ourselves. We are not in our circumstances. We are not anything, Father, except in Christ. And Lord, I thank you for every healing, deliverance, manifestation of blessing, yes, that the, yes, the healing and, uh, of nations, God, the, the, uh, without striving, Lord, everything that we have need of, those desires, Father, to be more in love with you or more desirous of you, that comes from you anyway. And you're already giving us, because you said you would give us the desires of our heart, those things that you put in our hearts, Lord. There is no guilt and no sh condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, and mm. we are. And we receive you today, and we receive what you are doing and what you did today in prayer from 6 a.m. on, Father God, Whoa. in Jesus' we name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Got time for one more? You know, in, in Psalm 45, it says, verse 8, your garments are scented with myrrh, aloes, and cassia out of the ivory palaces by which they have made you glad. So, yeah, when our Lord begins to move, you, yeah, he's releasing those scents and those places of, of lordship and blessing. We're going to, uh, uh, we've got, uh, uh, praise the Lord, I love the chat and I love being connected. Jonathan, we're going to go into uh, Colossians chapter 2 with everybody online. Let's, let's take a moment. We are in a position that each of us leaning into truth, accepting the word we're hearing, saying I will receive it whether I, understand, whether I get it or whether I even have faith for it. I just will receive it as truth and I'm going to pull and accept. We are cre coming into that cadence where we're, that's the like-mindedness, the one accord, uh, the, we're in agreement and that's exponential when it comes to just pulling or receiving the blessing, the wind from heaven, the sound from heaven, and the new move. So when you say that, Becky, I agree. Yeah. Season of dryness and, and lack and loss and trying to get that connection is, dis is being displaced by the Lord's dancing and twirling. And the other time Jesus did that was when his disciples came, the 70 came back and talked about, whoa, you won't believe it. Even the demons are subject to us in your name. And he said, Father, I'm so thrilled that you've hidden all of what I, you've been given me from the wise and the prudent have revealed it to babes. And he says he rejoiced in the spirit. It means he spun around because he was seeing the father fulfillment of he was carrying the truth that was now expanding. So how much more will he, is that going to happen as the living body of Christ comes into, the, into agreement? One heart at a time and one tribe at a time. Praise God. So if you'll break up and let's break up in the house, two or three people. We've got 15, we've got 12 minutes. And then I want to share online with us. And I'm going to go into Colossians 2, which is where we were today. So let's go ahead. Just yeah, find a group of two or three. Just it's, it's powerful. Every time we hear one another, agree with one another, we are making a huge impact on the power of God coming to the earth to touch us where he wants to touch us. Praise Jesus. All right. <clears throat> okay, so if you got Colossians 2 in front of you, we'll try to keep up with it. Kelly, I'll begin on Colossians 2, 1. So this is supernaturally powerful. He says, for I want you to know the great conflict I have for you and those in Laodicea have not seen my face. In chapter 1 yesterday, and again, as I was listening to it today, I realized 
Paul's writing to the Colossians. He has not seen them. They're, they heard the gospel through a faithful minister. But he says that your hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love and attaining to all the riches of the full assurance of understanding. So he's expanding what happens when we take the time to be diligent seekers of the Lord as spoken in the scripture until the scripture begins to be seen and experienced in our life. Full assurance of understanding to the knowledge of the mystery of God. This is all a big theme right now. Mystery of God, both of the Father and of Christ. So both of God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. In whom, in God the Father and in Christ, are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I was just praying for someone today that was looking for wisdom. And I'm saying, well, the wisdom, Jesus Christ has been made to us wisdom from God. And here we find it verified that all the treasures of wisdom are found in God, the Father, and in Christ. Now, this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. That, this is the reason I am so returning to the Bible. I'm just, the Bible is more of a, empowering book than any anything I'm hearing and it's and it's affecting my capacity to to receive and believe and and perceive God because what happens is often we go on tangents we'll touch that maybe if we get that far for though I am absent in the flesh Paul speaking I'm not in your presence yet I'm not I am with you in spirit so I ask online we're together you can be in saddle Seattle Jonathan or you can be just down the street but we're together in the spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ. It, the, in these last days, it's faith in Christ. It's faith in what God the Father has accomplished for us in Christ and where we are there with him. So he said, therefore, as therefore you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. A lot of the appropriating of truth is now based in that we accept what is the testimony God gives of his son. And then we say, I'm going to now accept that to be truth that will find expression into my life, into my being and out of my being. So walk in him, rooted and built up and established in the faith. See, the faith that comes from the word, the faith, the faith that comes from him, the faith that is in him, given coming alive in the word as we've been taught abounding with thanksgiving so here's not it's not too early become a thankful believer believers that are thankful will have greater active faith than those who are believing but have lost their thanksgiving and are beginning to be uh, unthankful it's just it's you're either thankful or you're unthankful and and you it's a choice and we're choosing to abound in it. We abound in our faith with thanksgiving. Beware lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men. There's so much information flooding around that are that outside what I read in scripture and they may well be wonderful and they may well not be but they can they can uh, move us out of this the central place because it says they, they can take us according to the basic principles of the world. Even just good advice, good practical ways they operate in the natural world. But they're not according to Christ who has lifted us out of the beggarly elements of Christ. For in him dwells, in Christ dwells all and I don't, I, I don't make no apologies for this now. I stand in this scripture and I say I am in you Jesus. Because in you, Jesus, is all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In the body of the man, who's now seated at the right hand, and in the body of the church, whom you're the head of, is the fullness of the Godhead. So I'm, I'm, I'm letting you, that which is fully in me, which is very scriptural, that, according, that we be filled with the fullness of God, and God is able to do beyond what we can ask or think according to the power that's in us. And you are complete in him. Let me say that again. You, we are complete in him. Complete. I know, we, I know we're facing lack and difficulties. I know you're, we're, we're calling forth the health and the wealth. I know there's situations that the natural would say, well, it doesn't look to be very complete. 
But I want to agree with the word of God because this is what God has said is the truth over our life. He is the head of all principality and power. In him, we were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. This is about the covenant that now all have to enter into, Jew and Gentile alike. And it was not with hands. It was by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ. So if you're struggling with sins of the flesh that they want to perpetually try to dog you down, what we can say, I have now stepped into the circumcision of Christ where he's cut off the foreskin of my heart and I am no longer going to be bound to the sins of my flesh. Buried with him in baptism. If you've been with us for the last couple of weeks on Sunday, we talked about that we were made alive with Christ. We were raised with Christ. We were seated with Christ. Those are jointly accomplished. Even though we were dead and all of us weren't born, but all of mankind was brought into salvation with Christ. But we were also in baptism. We were, we were buried with him. So this is, again, co-jointly. We were buried with him, in which we were raised with him. There we again, through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. Once I believe that God raised Jesus from the dead, that resurrection life comes into me. And it is because of my believing of God doing what he did for the Son. And because I'm in the Son, it's for me. And you being dead in your trespasses. Ah, ab, and the uncircumcision of your flesh. That's how most of us were found. All of us were found dead in our trespass, no matter who you were. We all were dead in our trespass. The uncircumcision of our flesh, he made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Take a moment, just say, I've been forgiven all of my trespasses. I've been forgiven all my trespasses, past, present, and the future. They were dealt with. Having wiped out the right handwriting of requirements that was against us. This is in Ephesians chapter 2 also. So the law had requirements, and the requirements were against us because they were contrary to us. They were saying, don't covet. And inside my flesh, all I wanted to do was covet. They said, don't lust. And all it made my flesh want to do is lust because it, it incited the sin within. And he has taken it, the law, writing the law, the written requirements, taken it out of the way, and he nailed it to the cross. So picture Jesus. The Bible says that cursed is every man that hangs on the tree. It said cursed is everyone who does not continue in every commandment that was given through Moses. So Jesus on the cross becomes the curse of the law. And he absorbs and satisfies the judgment, the condemnation, the curse, and the sin until the Father just declares as judge, you are, you, this has now been reconciled. It has been paid for in full. So Jesus gives, commits his spirit to the Lord, and he's carried off the cross and buried and he's to be raised in three days. But guess what didn't leave the cross? <laughs> the law. Unless we go back into the law, it's stuck on the cross. It doesn't follow the believer as the, as the means of, of, of controlling relationship or denying relationship. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them. So raising and standing in a new place which we stand with him he he dismantled he caused us to walk in his triumph and he let so he says now let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or sabbaths so there was this pull to go back into jewish uh, observances that were biblical observances but then they began to become focuses instead of shadows Instead of parts that could lead us to Christ, they began to become additions to Christ, and soon they become the focus instead of Christ, which are shadows of things to come, they said. But the substance, the body, the substance is of Christ. We're always returning to Christ because in Christ is everything, and God accomplished everything in Christ and called all the things that we are to receive with Christ. It's there. Let no one cheat you of your reward. We heard that. He's a rewarder. How could someone cheat me of my reward? Well, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels. 
We get a lot of direction from a lot of places. It needs to first and foremost be from the scripture. Let the spirit of God confirm and activate it in your life. But if, because it says they intrude into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind. I don't know if you know this. I know it in my own self. My fleshly mind, my mind wanting to move in the flesh, the outer man, can come up with a lot of fanciful things. And, and they can pull me in a direction, or others can pull me in the direction of what they got. And next thing you know, I'm, tra I'm de traversing a path that's taking me out of my reward because I'm not diligently seeking the Lord who's a rewarder. I'm now going off on a tangent. Not holding fast to the head. Do you see how much distraction is being let, waged against to take us off the focus? I've got to hold on to the head. So I'm learning that if uh, it's to the word, to lead me to Jesus. The word brings me to Jesus. The whole scripture testifies of Jesus. All the scripture is fulfilled. God fulfilled all the promises in, in Jesus. All the promises of God are yes in Christ and amen to the glory of God through us. And so I got to hold on to the head. If I'm holding on to the head, then out of him, all from whom all the body, every living member, we're nourished, knit together, and joined together with ligaments. And we grow and it causes an increase that is from God. It's not us trying to create unity and work together and get agreement. It's just hold to the one. All of us holding to the head. All of us holding the head. Next thing you know, life's flowing. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world. So we've been, we've been totally released from the captivity that the world could lay claim to us and limit us because of this, that, and the other. As though living in the world, do you subject yourself to regulation? Do not touch, do not taste, do not handle. Again, there are lots of things I don't want to touch nor taste or handle, but I don't want to focus on the do nots. I want to focus on the do's. I want to focus on behold the lamb. Keep my eyes on Jesus. Connect to him. Which all concern things that perish with the using. We'll get over what do we eat or how do we dress. Things that we can do, but then they're passed after we've done them. Instead, they're just, many of them, unfortunately, become commandments and doctrines of men. So these things have, and this closes the book, and I'm going to pray for you. Look, close the chapter. I can't believe I got through the whole chapter. Oh, I love this chapter. These things indeed, all that has been mentioned to walk away from so we can continue to hold to the head and engage with the truth and live in Christ. They have an appearance of wisdom. In New King James, which I'm reading, in self-imposed religion. You know what the old King James calls it? Will worship. There's something about creating our own religion that we impose upon ourselves that kind of gives us a sense that looks like, wow, we really kind of got our place together. But it's, and, and this false humility and neglect of the body. Sometimes we treat our body with such severity as though by treating it severely, which is, it's, it, it, we would then somehow please God or conquer its effect. But it's, it says here, they are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. The way we disengaged from the indulgence of the flesh and the sins of the flesh is we come into the spirit and walk in the spirit and walking in the spirit is in agreement with the truth of God concerning the son to walk with the son everything of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Jesus Christ so I want to release this blessing and if you'll let me I'm going to pull the rest of the house into this so I can give it to everyone love you guys love you Okay, so I'm going to just release a blessing. You can continue, keep praying because you're engaged. Stay in faith. But Father, I want to thank you for the Colossian 2 blessing that was given through the Apostle Paul, the, the admonition to continue in the faith and be steadfast and rooted and with thanksgiving and to recognize that in the baptism of Christ, we were baptized into his death. In the resurrection of Christ, we were raised with him. And upon the cross, all of our sins were were dealt with in the curse and in the condemnation and the judgment and they were left the sin not the sin but just the law that continues to cause sin to come forward was nailed there and so we are a people that are learning to follow year and hold fast to the head please would you dismantle every tradition of man and every commandment of man that is not that is in competition with Jesus Christ from our lives and let us be a people that that live 
in fellowship with the truth, in fellowship with the Son, and with fellowship with the Father, in all of the mystery of God that is found, and all the wisdom, and all of the knowledge that we need. We receive that. We disengage from struggles that are leading us into bigger struggles. We are not in regarding to try to control all those things. We just simply bring ourselves back to you in submission, in agreement, in delight, in the love. And we thank you for what you're doing. And we bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Jesus. You are the head of our union. And from you, life flows. And with you, we receive everything that God the Father has given to you and done through you and done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.